Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me a two page PDF and they are trying to create this right here. Now this was done with a scroll saw or a band saw or even a CNC milling machine. And it doesn't have to be as perfect as you see they're using compasses and calipers and all kinds of things that draw it with. And you're drawing with a pencil one Corel. Maybe some of the measurements aren't gonna fit perfectly because we're gonna be so precise. But we do need to know that the, this thing is 14.53 exact, it says. So we're going to take a pentagon, a five-sided pentagon, and we're going to hold down the control button so we make an equal one. Now, we need it to be 14.53 across this bottom. And I'm at 11.76. So we need to make it a little bit bigger. So if you take your, and grab this node right here, or this handle and just start moving it out, and we're at 1268, 1362, 1485, 1391, 1407, 22, 30, 36, 51. Okay, when we get that close, we can do this right here. Let me make the numbers bigger so you can see them. And what we can do is grab our pentagon, and as long as your ratio is locked, we need to make it a little bit bigger, so we need to take away and make that a three. And now we're at 1453, so I just increased it. But we still need to check, and I'm gonna show you how to get your numbers bigger, change it to dimension, and now, if you look, we grab the parallel dimension tool and we're at 14.53 on all sides. So we know we're good and square. Now there's really no way to center a pentagon, it's like a star, and that's not the center of the page. But we do have a couple of uh, measurements. We got three inches and they want up two inch from the corner. So we're gonna draw a, and it just so happens that the Pentagon's up and down the points of top. I'm gonna to hold down the control button and make it three inch. I am gonna hit P. I'm gonna go ahead and select them both and hit T like in Tom to put it to the top. Now holding down the control button, so we'll go straight up and down. I'm gonna put it right there to that quadrant. I'm gonna nudge it down two inches to get the center two inches from there. So now we're two inches from that center. We go from the center of the up, we have two inches. That's what the paper says to do. Now, since we, there's no way to rotate this because it's not a centerable item, we're gonna take a two point line and go from there and make sure you click on node, node, to node, node, to node. Don't do the edge, do the nodes. One more. So now we have a centerable item. We can control D and make a duplicate of that circle. We're going to go, one of my lines is off. I want to double check that, make sure what I did wrong. I probably just didn't go from node to node. Get our two point line, node to node. Now we're on schedule. I'm gonna see, we had already made a duplicate of that, so can, we don't have to control D, center rotation to there, to the center, and rotate it 72 degrees. Control D, 144 degrees. Control D, control D. Now we're gonna keep these lines, we're gonna need them for a second. We're gonna grab all this and we're gonna hit Control G to group them together and we're gonna rotate it 36 degrees because now I want a flat side to work with. The next circle needs to be nine and a half inches and don't really know need to know the inch seven and a quarter because uh, the measurement's not exactly right anyway. 
So let's get a, hold down the control button. And let's make a 9.5 inch circle. Let's hit P, put it, see how it's not, doesn't look like it's in the center of the page because we rotated it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna center it right there on that note. Now you can see that we're not there. Now, if that was working with a pencil, that might work. We're gonna change our nudge factor to something lower like 0 0.01. We're gonna grab that and we're gonna nudge straight down. And that's the advantage of working with it on the top. We're not quite there. I'm gonna call that good. Good way to test it. Take your smart fill tool and fill that in. And we're not there yet because it's still uh, letting color leak. So let's go down one more time. Smart fill tool. And you see now we've stopped that leakage from happening. Now we still have our rotation lines. We're gonna grab our big circle, control D and make a duplicate. Let's take our center to there. Rotate it 72 degrees. Control D, Control D, Control D. Now, before I get rid of these lines, I'm gonna go ahead and test a few, and they're working, so we're good. Now, what we need to do is take our virtual segment delete key and delete that light right there. That right, whoop, went too far. All we're doing is making places for the smart fill tool to leak. Now we will delete all the lines here in a second. We don't want the center lines, but we don't have to worry about those other lines. And if everything's working, <clears throat> take the smart fill tool and fill that in and voila, you have that shape. Turn it black, make it look better. And that is pretty cool. Now, it does have a hole in it, I just realized. But this should be a centerable item because it's, well, it's not, is it? So maybe before you took all that stuff away, um, we could do indexing lines, put them in the center, and then take our virtual segment delete key and go and delete these lines. And we could, you know, we could put a, drill a hole in it right now. So I don't know what size the hole is and it doesn't really matter. Well, I'm not gonna take the time, but we can draw, let's say it's a half inch hole, make it 0.5 and put it in the center. Let me zoom in here for just a second. And because we put the indexing lines, I know exactly where the center is. Indexing lines will not stop the smart fill tool. So now we have a hole in, this, in the center of our object. Pretty cool. I don't know what it's for. Uh, might be some sort of gear. I haven't really read up on it. And uh, I truly hope that helped him a little bit. And thank you for watching.